really decide they want to go off the rails. I We are ready for FNAF lore. This is going to be the ultimate video, the ultimate VOD, the ultimate stream, the ultimate wherever you're watching this, okay? We're going to systematically dissect all the information from the entire series, most of it, and put it in a cohesive timeline. By the end of this stream, you will understand FNAF, and there will be a Q&A session at the end. Just in, just in case none of this easy-to-digest information really hits home. Because we all know that it's just... We all know that it's extremely easy to understand, so... Alright. This, this is my Five Nights at Freddy's timeline. You like Comic Sans? You like Comic Sans? Yes. Yes. He's in disbelief that we are about to tackle this uh, massive achievement. Alright. Alright, so, FNAF all starts with two families, okay? We got the Aftons, alright? And that includes only the people in that picture really there's there is like a wife character but she doesn't really in some versions of the lore people interpret that she she gets got and then some interpretations say that she's not she's just not even really a part of the lore that's that's yeah we'll get into the names and specifics as we go. And then we got the Emily family, which most notably is Henry Emily and his daughter. Uh, I think her name is Charlotte, but it really doesn't matter that much. Her name doesn't really matter. Okay. Alright. This is this is all making sense, correct? Don't worry. I'll probably lose you at some point in the near future. Alright, so... They came together. They're both scientists, all right? They're both fantastic engineers, okay? So they come together and they create, I believe, Fazbear Entertainment or some business kind of like that. And they build the, and they build uh, this restaurant right here. This is the first canon location not seen in any games. Okay, but it has two animatronics. It's those two right there. And uh, Spring, Spring Bonnie, and Golden Freddy, correct? Yes, correct. And and these are special suits that they make that can be worn by people, or you can put them into another mode where they like chill out by themselves, like they just do everything like a robot. That'll be very important as we go along. That little tidbit is vital. Okay, but you know. One of them is the purple guy, right? Michael Afton. Michael Afton. That's the purple guy's real name is Michael Afton. You know, it's the purple guy. You know? You know? So he takes this. He takes that right there from the restaurant. And he takes it. And I this... 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 Is debated whether or not this is the first actual big event of the timeline. Some people have other things coming first, but to me, this makes the most sense. Is that he, the first thing he, well, he doesn't do it right away, but you know, eventually he decides he wants to commit some very uh, not pog champ things, and uh, he takes the suit and wears it and lures uh, five victims. To the back of the restaurant, right, and kills them. That is what I believe is the first event. And obviously, the whole point of the game is that, like, he uses the suits to hide the bodies, right? And so, by this time, there's five animatronics. They, you know, they keep working on them, and then it's these five right here. And uh, he kills and he gets away with it. Uh, it doesn't help the business any because it, you know, 
how, how long can you hide them? But uh, really what happens next is he wants, he's, he just keeps getting crazy. So he decides to make a new company called Afton Robotics. And then he makes his own spin-off chains of the restaurant, like that one right there. And he builds, mo he builds this one robot in her circus baby, all right? She's designed to like trick people she's designed to, to, to kill right but she really her she's programmed to like just get one so that way no one knows it wants to be a secret um, undefeated on in 1v1 on Nuketown uh, he has one of those black ops 2 she has one of those black ops 2 emblems that say like 80 to 0 undefeated with 1v1s and you challenge them and then they they just know the spawns and they shoot you through the garages with snipers it sucks but one on the first day first day that she was active at the restaurant she kills a girl right and this is important this is important because this girl turns out to be his michael afton purple guy's daughter okay okay that's why I have this, this Freddy, you just can't believe it. But, this is, this is, like, the first big thing that happens to Michael Afton, to Purple Guy. Alright, so his kid dies, his daughter dies, to this thing. And he freaks out, and he, uh, he doesn't want any of his other kids. Those, those, that animatronic is pushed underground, alright? We forget about that animatronic for now, it doesn't exist. Okay doesn't exist but he doesn't want his other kids uh, Michael is his one his oldest and then his other son which has been rumored to be it. his name's Evan or something like that we don't really know but it doesn't really matter um, so this is when we get to the first game in the series <laughs> this is when the first actual game starts and the first one is the fourth one so you start with number four And basically the premise is that Purple Guy doesn't, he tries to scare his his youngest kid with uh, like special technology to scare him uh, so that he never wants to go to a place with the animatronics. So that way they don't die somehow. Um, and it works, which is what we see in the game. Um, and his older brother, Michael, scares him constantly with another mask we see. Um, and then it kind of just goes like off the rails. <laughs> and at their at his birthday party, uh, he he the, him and his friends lift him up to the to the to the mouth of Golden Freddy, and uh, and and he gets chomped because the spring lock suits, which is what they are, so you can change them between human wearing and robot, alright? The springs can like snap, and if you're inside of it, you get killed, and you get squished, you get squinged, you get craned, and such. And uh, moisture does that, so like him, his tears crying, this is the crying child, this is the crying child. Was that the bite of 87? See? This is, okay, is this the bite of 87? Marky Markiplier sure seems to think so, as pictured in this image. Um, but no, you'd be incorrect. You'd be incorrect. This is not the this is not the by eighty seven, as it was theoried to be. Like five years ago, it was thought that it was, but it's not. It's <laughs> Markiplier is great calling. It's not. It's the bite of eighty three. Actually, crying child gets killed in the bite eighty three. All right. Basically, like I explained earlier, spring lock failure. Uh, so he was inside it. He gets crunched by water, and it makes the springs squish him. If that if that image is helpful. So obviously, Purple Man does not like because now his two youngest are dead. All right, so he goes even more crazy. Meanwhile, in the background of this of this incident happening, all right, you got Henry Emily, his business partner. He decides, you know what? I don't think I want to do this. I don't, I just don't feel like doing this. I don't want to deal with this guy anymore. 
He's weird. He's purple. Okay, he's weird. So he goes on to create the FNAF 2 location to get away from, like, William Afton and his name, because he is, like, a suspect, kind of, but they don't really pin anything on him. So he creates the FNAF 2 location and the new animatronics. And they have a special security scan ability to stop Afton from getting in and killing more kids, so... Oh, shoot. Afton mad as hell. So one day, after birthday party, there's uh, they, we see in the, this little mini game in FNAF 2 that um, there's one kid that gets locked outside, and the purple guy comes up and kills him. But one of the new animatronics built this place was the puppet, and the puppet's job was to was to protect the kid for one reason. Right? And the kid dies, and the puppet goes out to find it and like dies on top of it, so they're both dead out there. Uh, <coughs> it was it was Henry Emily's daughter, right? So now both the daughters are dead, of the two main dudes running all the businesses. I just had to reboot after that cough. This is when okay, if you weren't hooked already by the premise, this is when stuff starts to go crazy. They want to go off the rails. Right. Anyway, okay, yeah, back on track. Back on track. Bad work with hand. That that wasn't right. That wasn't supposed to be there. That wasn't supposed to be there. You guys, that that's not canon. That's not canon. Bonnie X Freddy's not canon. All right. So so okay. So that happens, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I can do this. Right? I can kill him." <laughs> so so he gets the the. the <laughs> The yellow suit back, all right, and he uses it to sneak past the animatronics, right? And all you know now there's like a million. Why <laughs> Freddy Owis? Why Freddy Kiss? It's not canon. It's not canon. Not canon. You don't have to worry about that. It's not relevant to the lore. Uh, so after all these dead kids are here, right? We're at the point where the puppet is like, all right, I'm gonna fix you. So he so so he takes the souls, and uh, he allows that she I guess what business she she allows them to be able to control, like at least in, inhabit the body of, a, of an animatronic, the souls of all the children. So now all of them are inhabiting the animatronics, and they want to kill William Afton. So they become aggressive towards adults and the staff. And this all comes to a conclusion. We're still in FNAF 2, by the way, if in case that was not clear. We're still in FNAF 2, so we've covered 4 and 2 in so far. There's, like, a lot of other games left. Uh, so this animatronic, we're going to go ahead and call it Rat Bastard, comes along, all right, and kills the night worker Jeremy Fitzgerald on night, seven, night 6 of FNAF 2. Uh, during the daytime, so like he gets through a shift and he goes to the day and his birthday party, and then he gets killed by a rat bastard in the bite of '87. That is the bite of '87. Was a uh, was it was the night guard that you're playing as in FF2, the last day. So after last night, the day, uh, a rat bastard. That's actually that's the most uh, agreed upon, as uh, we don't actually know. There, it was never confirmed. Like, <laughs> no, I, <laughs> no, I don't think that's true. I don't think. Anyway, don't look at chat. No, don't, don't click that link. It's not true. I, you're just, you're just biased. 
you're just biased and you're picking. Right? So yeah, this is the most, there's other theories that it was uh, Funtime, Chica, maybe Foxy, or Freddy. Um, but I think that the most logical conclusion is this situation. Rat bastard. Uh, killing Jeremy, your, your guy. That's the bite of 87, so Markiplier was wrong. This is the bite of 87. So this new location, FNAF 2, gets shut down. Toy animatronics get destroyed. Purple Guy is still out there, though. Now we're back to Purple Guy. Purple Guy's still out there. He's still crazy. So he creates uh, another business where he creates animatronics that are designed to be like rented out to parties and stuff. Right? And Circus Baby's still there. He's still there, inhabited by the soul of his daughter. And uh, there's a theory in the community that um, that Ballora is like somehow like either contains his wife or is like a copy of her. And why is FNAF got why is FNAF got to go this hard? Sheesh! It's just FNAF. It's a purple guy. He after this is all done. It's all created. All right. All the animatronics exist. The business is still going. He's renting them out. Whatever. All this stuff. Purple guy decides that he or purple guy ends up like learning that the, that the animatronics and have souls control him. So he decides to try to destroy all the original ones that still exist to try to like you know make it so that they can't come after him and kill him. So this brings us close to FNAF 1. This isn't exactly all occurring during FNAF 1, but this is like how we get to where FNAF 1 is. Uh, so he's trying to destroy those five that you see in the first original game. He goes to Freddy's and he, he's able to dismantle them all, but it kind of backfires um, when all the souls come free and then they go after him. Right, he gets he gets cornered in a back room. All right, where they keep the spare old suit. So he says, "All right, my last opportunity is to try to get inside the suit, and like that's I mean, that's the suit he used to kill him. So he thinks it's gonna like protect him somehow, like scaring him or something. And uh, you know, it's can't it's kept it's old, it's dilapidated, uh, it's kept in a terrible building. So." Got got. Purple guy gets killed, canonically killed, at the uh, at this location because of spring lock failure. And I just want to take a moment to all acknowledge this is uh, it's he's he becomes sealed in the back room, so he just gets locked in there and is thought to be dead. Uh, I just want to just want to acknowledge that purple guy dead. Rip bozo. Laughing emoji. So the in, the animatronics are reassembled at FNAF One, <coughs> oh, shit. and uh, this place stays open for a little bit until uh, customers complain of foul odors coming from the animatronics, and that people could see blood and mucus around the eyes and the mouth, and uh, they look like reanimated carcasses. So this is FNAF One. This is what's happening. Um, and Henry Emily, this is like when he's like, all right, you know what? I think I've done enough. I think, I think this might be it. <laughs> you know, I think I've had enough of this pack watch. Smoking that purple guy pack. So time passes, right? This is all like time passes. Michael Afton, purple guy's son, is worried about where his father went and why is my family dead and gone? Well. He goes to he goes to uh, the facility where those animatronics were held, right? which occurs in the game's sister location as the fifth game. And over the course of the week, he learns like what happens, what happened to his sister and uh, his brother. And well, he knew about his brother. Obviously, he was there, but um, maybe what happened to his mom, if that is actually true, but at least his sister. Um, and what happens is they trick Michael into going into what is called the scooping room. So it's like a 
I don't, I don't really know why it's called that, but it just dismantles the animatronics, and uh, they form together. This is the okay. I told you. <laughs> I told you this is where things might get interesting. Uh, so the animatronics get the, the endoskeletons create. They all become one, so they become like this weird looking. It's called Ener. They scoop the hell out of this guy. All right. And then they hide inside of him. <laughs> the robot hides inside of his body and uses him to like try to live among us. Uh, and find and kill the purple guy. This is all making sense, by the way. This is all this is all canon. This is what happens. Is it making sense? Good. Uh, then this happens. Does this make sense? Uh, in this order, by the way. This is not just a random series of images. It's in this order. And he survives this. He survives this. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't die from this. Or he does die, but he comes back somehow. And you might be asking yourself, how? How does this happen? How? Um, best I can do is I, I think um, something to do with the animatronics and how they're able to have souls and then they like live in him or something. There's a whole another part of the lore that comes from the books and that's this thing called Remnant. It's like a fusion of like souls and like metallic stuff and then that's what gives the animatronics the ability to have the souls and apparently the theory is that it, you know because they went inside of him that he got he had some of it so he he just survives I don't I don't come this part doesn't is more he, he just inhabits his own body again as a soul I don't I don't know Okay, he lives. Canonically, he dies, but he also continues existing. And is a major player. So, are there there are books? Yes. Yes, there are a lot of books. Lots of books. There's like four in one series and then the rest are like short stories, but there's a lot of them. I don't think they're not directly connected to the game lore though. So, they're not Ideas from the books have been taken to try to put them into the lore, but I don't really pay attention to the books, so I kind of just go without them. It still makes sense, kind of, without the books. That's why I didn't bring anything into it, because I've never read them, and I'm not going to read them. But I also understand, like, a couple big things from them. Um, so his mission also becomes to kill uh, his dad, who becomes Springtrap uh, in FNAF 3. He gets let out of the sealed room after like lots of years, and uh, after a a horror attraction based on the rumors of what happened at the old friend's location opens up, right? And Michael Afton finds an ad to work there, and he figures there's a good chance his father might be there. And as it turns out, they find him. The work, the owners of the place find him, bring him there as part of the attraction. And after that week, uh, Michael sets the place on fire. And he thinks he killed his dad and uh, freed the souls of the other children that were there. So that'd be like the original animatronics. Um, so after everything, I feel like it's a good time for a break to just discuss who is actually still alive in the canon at, up to this point. Because we're getting close to how far he and everything goes. Um, so we have Michael Afton, the son. Springtrap, which is purple guy, which is William Afton, his dad. We have the Molten Freddy, which is pretty much entered all the ones put together without Baby. Um, and then we have Baby, who gets kicked out of Ennard for some reason and becomes her own thing again, rebuilds herself possessed by William Afton's daughter. So those three 
are still there. Then we have Henry Emily, who's still alive. The puppet, who is his daughter, in FNAF 2. And then a new animatronic named Lefty. And Lefty's goal, his only goal, is to capture the puppet. To, like, put it inside of him so that he can contain it. And then I put Golden Freddy at the bottom, because he's kind of always just, like, a spirit that is involved. Like, he's... It's confusing as to, like, what Golden Freddy is. I think it's it's I think it's agreed upon that he's more of a spirit entity than anything. Like he's not he's not really like always physical. You know what I mean? He's kind of a ghost. Um, but yeah, these are the remaining people. So then uh, Henry Emily decides that he is going to try to finish everything. So in FNAF six. This is Pizzeria Simulator. Right? He creates a location with the plan of luring every single person on that last slide to come here. Michael gets the job as the guard, or as the franchisee, because it's all about like, creating his own thing. And he's tasked with salvaging any animatronics that they find in the back alley. And over the week, uh, they all come back. All four of them show up every night, or one a night. And you bring them in, and once they're all in there, they are, they, you know, obviously, it's bad, because you have kids there, you're trying to run their place, and then, uh, you know, you're releasing deadly animatronics, and, well, uh, he knew this, obviously, as it was a trap, and we have a cutscene we can watch. Uh, at the end of FNAF 6, this is what happens, oh shoot, hang on, I gotta turn off the ambiance, I can even get in the mood. Alright, this is the cutscene that plays after the good ending of FNAF 6. Very crucial. Oh, 
force you have carried in your arms. This ends for all of us in communication. All right. Okay. That's the end of FNAF 6. Okay. This kills all the previously mentioned characters that I had up on that slide. Alright, similar fashion to this. And then we have Ultimate Custom Knight, which I, is kind of a one off thing, but it also it, it's theorized that Golden Freddy's spirit uh, tortures William Afton after he dies by reliving, by having to go through and getting it killed by the like, animatronics in his own hell. That's it. It's FNAF. There isn't any more. You don't need to keep looking. There isn't more. Really, there's, there isn't more. God. This co this this timeline only covers uh, the beginning to six and ultimate custom night. There is more. <laughs> there is a lot more. Some of it's uh, a little more tricky, and uh, as it comes to ultimate or security breach. Uh, we're kind of there's still a lot unanswered <laughs> so um, I'm not even gonna try there's a lot of stuff going on but now using all this information you too can be the king of five nights at Freddy's like dear like dear boy Markiplier this is you this is you now that you've listened to this hey that's you. Beetlejuice. That's <laughs> that's you. You are him. That is you. Congratulations.